Alright, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing really well and welcome to today's video, which is on the Iron Lady, the most powerful woman in football. Roman Abramovich's deputy, his director, his number two, the woman that runs Chelsea Football Club, Marina Granovskaya. Now, since Roman Abramovich's visa problems and his absence from SW6, the bridge, Chelsea games generally, it's been more of a salient point or a talking point, I think, because Marina is the number one at Chelsea now and has been for a long time. She deals with everything, which I'm going to get into in this video and explain how she's often the scapegoat for Chelsea, but really, is she actually very good at her job? Anyway, before we do get into today's video, I want to request that you do subscribe to this YouTube channel and make sure you hit the bell notifications icon because I upload every day. I don't want you guys to miss out on any content, so subscribe. Oh yeah, and also do me a favor and like this video. Right, so who is Marina Granovskaya? She's a Russian-Canadian businesswoman that Roman Abramovich has known for over 20 years. They first came in contact with each other in 1997 when Roman took over a big oil company and he got her in to do some biz. Seven years later, he sold that oil company for over 250 times the amount he bought it for. And by then, he was already at Chelsea or he had already bought Chelsea. So he thought, you know what? I'm going to get my home girl Marina in who did such good bits with me in the oil company. I'm going to bring her over to Chelsea and she's going to help me out. And he did. And she did. So, Ground of Sky came to London and she became Roman Abramovich's number two. And throughout the year, she became more and more important to the London club. She got different roles and responsibilities and stuff. At first, obviously, she was just the trusted businesswoman by Roman Abramovich. But slowly, she started doing more and more and more and getting her hands into more parts of the business, more parts of the football club. Certainly, at the beginning or for the earlier stages, she was in charge of creating business relationships certainly with like other clubs as well like she had a lot to do with Chelsea's relationship building with uh, Vitesse Arnhem the uh, club in the Eredivisie where now Chelsea send a lot of their youngsters for loans um, obviously someone like Mason Mount went there had a really successful loan, then went to Derby, and now he's looking like a bit of a superstar. But generally, she's the lady to get in contact with, the head honcho. She's the one that if you want to set something up at Chelsea, you talk to her, if you manage to get to her. So throughout the years, she was getting more and more responsibilities, and by 2010, she became Roman Abramovich's official representative. He no longer basically went around and did stuff. She would do it. She'd be his mouth, his eyes, his ears. And if she's in the room, essentially Roman Abramovich is in the room. Rather interestingly, no one really knows much about Granovskaya. She doesn't do any stuff in the media. She doesn't do interviews. The only kind of communication really that she does is when she does official club statements. You've obviously, if you work in football, if you work and you're doing business with Chelsea, you would have sat in a room with Marina Granovskaya. But people in the media, fans, pundits, people like me, we won't really know much about her or what she's like. But apparently she is a tough cookie and a mega hard negotiator. Often managers that have coached Chelsea or people directors of football or you know club chairmen from other clubs that have done business with Chelsea they're always quite coy when they talk about Marina like she's you know tough negotiator so I think she's a bit of a hard lady so throughout the year she became a hundred percent top dog at Chelsea and Roman's trust in her is a hundred percent absolute she is at the forefront of everything important that Chelsea do in 2013 she played the uh, mediator between Jose Mourinho and Roman Abramovich and she was integral in bringing Mourinho back to the club um, in 2013 to which obviously Chelsea won the Premier League shortly after. Marina Granovskaya also championed the appointment of Maurizio Sarri last summer. She identified what was working in the Premier League in terms of the style of football with Liverpool and Manchester City. She looked at his success in Serie A and how many games he was winning with entertaining football. She knew that Roman wanted entertaining football and she figured 
this type of coach might hopefully convince someone like Eden Hazard to stay. So it was actually quite a pragmatic appointment, like I said, championed by Marina Granovskaya. And of course, she was the main figure in bringing in Frank Lampard to Chelsea this season, the one that sat down with him, the one that masterminded what is happening at Chelsea, what could soothe the fan base, and what again would be a pragmatic and sensible appointment considering what's happening at the club at the time. And there's a lot of stuff you could look at with the academy, the transfer ban, the fans having unrest within the fans in terms of a relationship with the manager, Frank Lampard, perfect appointment. Sure, she's great at the general business and, you know, the relationship building, but what makes Granovskaya such an effective businesswoman or such an important figure at Chelsea Football Club is her financial negotiations. Granovskaya was behind the 2017 Nike deal. The Nike kit deal at Chelsea Football Club that pays 60 million pounds a year that runs all the way to the year 2032. Phew, that's a notorious deal in uh, sports finances, I guess. And she was at the forefront of that. Indeed, Chelsea's Iron Lady locked down an excellent deal with Nike. But I know what you're thinking. People like Ed Woodward, he's good at sponsorship deals, right? He does really well at Manchester United in terms of bringing in that kind of money. But is she just like that? Well, I'd say no, because Woodward screws up with player transfers all the time. Now, Marina Granaskaya is actually an amazing like transfer negotiator. Let me give you some examples. He was responsible for bringing in the negotiating players like Eden Hazard, bringing him into the Premier League and at Chelsea. Manchester United really, really wanted Eden Hazard. So did teams like Arsenal and teams on the continent. But yeah, there's the snapshot of Marina Granovskaya negotiating a deal with Eden Hazard and him signing the contract as she shakes his hand. She also managed to convince the most desired number nine in 2013 to join Chelsea in Diego Costa. He was a perfect age, he was scoring loads of goals, he was aggressive, and she got him to come to Chelsea Football Club. He didn't work out too badly either in the three seasons he played for Chelsea. And she managed to pry players like Torres away from Liverpool to come to Chelsea. And you know, think what you want about Torres, but he played important parts in Chelsea's success in the Champions League, etc. And Europa League. But it isn't just about convincing players to come to Chelsea or convincing clubs to give them to Chelsea. It's the transfer fees. It's getting them for a reasonable price and going, can say 32 million. But it's also selling players, right? Now she's made a ton of money for Chelsea Football Club in selling players. Two recent examples I want to offer you guys that I find really interesting are, look at Chelsea's two recently sold strikers in Alvaro Morata and the aforementioned Diego Costa. Firstly, Alvaro Morata, right, it's common opinion that he didn't perform well at Chelsea. He scored a few goals, but he was generally underperforming. He had probably quite a poor attitude and did not like English football. Chelsea played a big fee for him, something like 57 million. They got the Premier League tax on a Galactico striker, which is fair enough. This is what you pay for like top tier elite strikers or what you thought was one. But after a pretty turgid time in the Premier League, Ground of Sky managed to sell the ex-Real Madrid striker to Atletico Madrid, pretty much breaking even, which is nuts considering everything. But even more impressive than that, the sale of Diego Costa to Atletico Madrid. Right, so Chelsea bought him from there. He was very good for Chelsea, scored a bunch of goals, came with his fair share of problems, but I'm sure all of you know the relationship breakdown with Conte, the very public one. Conte texted him and said, you're never playing for Chelsea again. You're done, mate. Uh, everyone knew that, so all the buyers know, well, he's never going to play for Chelsea again. They can't sell him for anything, really. And what's worse, Diego Costa publicly came out and reiterated many times, I will only go to Atletico Madrid. You can try and sell me, but I'm only going to sign for them. Chelsea are now in a terrible position. Not only do buyers know this player is never going to play for them again, there's only one buyer that he will go to. So you think, oh God, Chelsea would be lucky to get 20 million for this striker. But no, Chelsea bought Diego Costa for 32 million pounds. And somehow, Marina Granovskaya managed to sell Diego Costa for 57 million pounds. A guy that was never gonna play for Chelsea again, only wanted to go to this club, and was entering the end of his prime years. If that isn't amazing negotiation skills, I don't know what is. So, 
Really, really important, mysterious and powerful figure. Indeed, the most powerful woman in football. She runs, she's the top dog essentially at Chelsea Football Club, the most successful English team this century and it's run by the Iron Lady, Marina Granovskaya. Say what you want about her, you can critique her, but the truth is the only things we know about her is pretty much the stuff I've said in this video and generally, it's all positive. A tough negotiator, probably really hard to do business with, always does the best thing for Chelsea financially and never budges. Chelsea Football Club are probably lucky to have her. Anyway, that's the end of the video, guys. What do you think? Get down in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on Grand of Sky. Is there anything important that I've missed or do you want to comment on anything I've said? Get down in the comments and let me know. Also, if you have enjoyed the content, why not like this video and help me out, guys? And also, you can follow me on social media, Instagram and Twitter, at Football Yannick. Also, if you'd like to, you're welcome to support the channel by donating a dollar or two in one of the links in the description, either Patreon or Streamlabs, to try and help me, you know, keep going and giving you guys content. Other than that, guys, I'm out. I hope you enjoyed the video. You lot enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double, silence on the trigger like my pick, got a muzzle, yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble, I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me, bitch.